Hey everybody, um, here's some of the images that you'll be creating as part of this course and uh, for this project I wanted to concentrate on what I call serial planes um, and that is dividing up a three-dimensional form into slices. If you, let me double click this image here, it's, I brought it into Photoshop. Um, if I take a plane and move it back by a set amount and then um, either just plain old repeat it or um, for more interest rotate it or scale it um, rotate it around the vertical axis, axis um, we find that it can be very complex and interesting without doing whoops a whole lot here um, let's see here's another view um, just uh, taking a plane and curving it and then repeating it and um, then doing a render with that. Um, here's taking um, a plane and then modifying it to be, make it into a, a circle um, with some thickness and rendering it as a metal kind of shape here and lighting it with a little blue lighting and flipping the whole thing up on its uh, side 90 degrees and here's one um, where the, the planes are now rotating around a common center. We call this radial symmetry. Um, and that's it. So why don't we get started? So come on over to Blender. I'm going to hit File, New, Reload, Startup File. <clears throat> And so first thing is let's make this into a, a flat plane. So I need to scale this along the green or Y axis here. So I want to hit the letter S on your keyboard and then the letter Y and then the number 0 .04 enter. And as you can see we've got ourselves oops, um, a decent little plane to begin with here. So to make this easier and to keep things accurate, I want to go into my very top view by hitting number 7 on the keypad and number 5 to get into orthographic mode. <clears throat> then I want to hit Shift, D, and Y again so that it constrains it to the Y axis and just move your mouse without clicking and bring it out here like that and then left click to set it. Now let's repeat that with a shift R and every time I'm holding down shift with my left pinky as I'm right-handed and with my index finger hitting the letter R and put out about a dozen of these. Three, six, nine, twelve, something like that. It's fine if you want to go a little more or less. It's good. And as I come back around you can see um, we have a sculpture that we could render uh, or form, uh, but just to show you um, the next um, little action on this, if I right click on, um, let's see, this is a tad tricky because what I want to do is click um, There's two vertices in here, one right here. Let me zoom right in on this. Um, and holding shift, I, it doesn't show it, but when this R, a yellow orange turned to a more red orange, then it's got both of these vertices uh, selected. So I'm going to go to the front view, and I'm going to hit R. And what I want to do is rotate that again the, on the Y axis. So I hit R, Y and try 10 just like that and then left click <clears throat> ah look what happened somehow i i uh, selected the back one as well so hit control z and a to deselect everything let me try this one more time let me just see if this will rotate the whole thing uh, so uh, r y 10, enter. Yep, it worked okay here. And if I click on the next one and hit 
Shift R. Notice that it repeated the exact same operation and gave it 10 degrees. And if I hit R one more time, it'll take it 20 degrees, right? So let me come back here and hit Shift R, 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 and rinse and repeat. Uh, you can go to the front view again. Oops, no, it's hard to see it that way. So R, 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 R. Uh, once you get to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 degrees, um, on the next one, well, let's keep going. Two, three, four, five, one more. Just not to confuse you, just keep adding one more. each time here. Um, so I'm just looking down here. I was going to say we could do a minus rotation here, so you don't have to click R so many times, but this is pretty minor. And just finish this out. One more. Okay. So that's pretty interesting. Um, Okay, so six minutes into the video, let's uh, put a base under this and finish it. So I'm going to hit number one again from the front. I'm going to left click underneath it to add a, put my 3D cursor below the object and I can either create, click the create tab, which is the second tab down on the left and click plane, or I can as a shortcut hit shift A to add a mesh plane. And <clears throat> let's turn this into a bit of a uh, little podium to set it on. So I want to extrude this uh, to make it thicker. So I'm going to hit E, Z, which is along the... Uh, oops, I have to do that. Let me hit Z again. What had just happened is while we're in object mode, Z is the shortcut to go into wireframe view. So I want to go into edit mode here on the left and hit E and Z and just pull this up straight down and go over to number three and it, I had this offset here. Wow. Escape. I'm sorry. Tab into object mode and pull this over here. And let's scale that a little wider. So I'm going to hit S. And it's making it thicker as well at this point, which is fine with me. If I didn't want the thickness, I would have it SY. Um, and let's pull this up so we can bury some of these in. And move it over a little bit more. Let's see how this is shaping up. Maybe um, SY a little wider. SY and pull it a little wider. And that's looking good. Okay, next I want to hit number zero on the keypad and see the point of view from the camera. And that's not a bad point of view if you want to render it from here. Um, let's do this and before I show you how to lock the camera in. Um, and render it here, but first up at the top, change Blender Render to Cycles Render, and then we have to set up a light for it. So over here in the Outliner, I'm going to pull down, oops, till I see the lamp, and click on the lamp to select it, and go to the Properties for the lamp right here, and <clears throat> Let's choose a sun lamp and make the size 1. This will make it pretty easy. Use nodes and for strength, um, let's hit 6, enter. And just to preview this, over next to object mode where it, it says solid mode that we're in now, go to rendered. And 6 is a little bit bright, so I'm going to reduce the strength. Let's try 4, enter. Um, that looks pretty good. I'm going to zoom in. Uh, actually, I'm going to just leave it alone because we haven't locked the camera yet. Um, 
one last tweak. I don't know how you feel about the background, but it's a little bit gray, uh, charcoal gray. The fourth button in right here is the background, or it's called World in Blender. So under Color, if I click on this gray color and pull this value scale on the far right all the way down to black, then um, it'll give us a black view here. <clears throat> so, um, because this is such a simple object, I'm going to click on the render uh, camera icon here. Come over to the right where it says sampling. I'm going to leave the render at 128. That's plenty. But I do want to create a bigger image. Uh, so I'm going to click under the XY here, the resolution. Instead of 50%, I'm going to bring that up to 100%. Um, since I have a fast video card, I'm going to use my GPU that's the graph, graphics processing unit to render this. And finally, I can either just click the render button or the shortcut is to hit F12, which is what I'm going to do, and render this. So I'm rendering it in real time, and as you can see, it's building tile by tile. Um, a uh, lit sculpture that's created with um, either a painted white balsa wood like you do in a traditional uh, 3D class or a fairly thick mat board and set on a white uh, base. Um, okay, I can zoom out a little bit and that rendered in 30 seconds. That's really good. Um, and at this point I want to save the image so I'm going to hit F3 and um, name it Project 2, two dash dot 1 is good. Save as image. And now I'm going to hit Escape to get out of the render view. And I'm going to um, hit 0 again on your numpad to see what the camera is seeing. Um, <clears throat> Let's see. So you can see this better. I'm going to make my world lighter. So you can see the frame here um, against the background. So notice that things get a little messed up if I um, start to try to move my camera around. So the issue is that we need to lock the camera to the view here. So I need to hit letter N as a Norman on your keyboard and click um, Lock Camera to View right here. Just check that and then to get rid of this. So hit N again. Now when I uh, notice that the frame of the camera has remained the same, but I can orbit and pan and change this view. I'm still in rendered viewport mode on the left here, so I can examine what the light looks like as I, I change this point of view. So this is an important part of each of these projects is to um, show us a few different points of view of each uh, project. Um, this is a little backlit here and I can raise the, here just for fun, let's raise the strength up. I can scrub this strength here just by clicking and dragging on it. And if you want the shadows to be a bit more distinct instead of one for the size of the sun, let's drop that down. Um, so see how it's casting some pretty nice shadows here. Um, right there at 0.25, um, I have these wonderful cast shadows. And so I can make these adjustments to the strength and um, to the size of the sun. Um, while I'm in a live render view here. Um, let me up the strength a little bit more just because of the backlighting and maybe pan down a little bit because the front of this podium or, or stand is not so exciting. Let me zoom in a little bit and now hit F12 again. And with my home computer, I'm 
expecting this to render in about 30 seconds again. Let me just pause it. Okay, a couple of observations. I happened to leave the background gray, which is a bit boring, and it took longer to render this time because I had zoomed in on it. Um, it goes pretty quickly when it's rendering just a blank wall, a world in the background, but as it's working out the details of how light is bouncing around in here, um, it takes more computing time. Um, something else you'll notice is uh, these tiny little grain pieces. We call that noise. Um, and we adjust the noise um, a couple of ways. Um, if I click on the render icon, which is the camera icon, and now come down under sampling, um, if this is closed, you can toggle that open. And under render, instead of 128, I could give it uh, 250, say, and hit enter. Um, another way is on the second tab in here. Um, this is the properties for the rendered layers. I can click on denoising. Um, with this shape, uh, I use this sparingly because it can make it sometimes not as sharp. Um, and I know with uh, 250 um, units of rendering right here, samples, um, I'll probably get rid of the noise completely. <clears throat> so I'm going to pause it again, and I'm going to hit the color again on the background on the world button, bring that to black, and let me uh, start rendering, hit F12 again, and I'll pause it. Okay, so that took a minute and 37 seconds. I still have a little grain here, um, but I kind of like that on this particular image. Um, it looks like photographic film grain from traditional film photography. Um, and uh, the black background is dramatic, um, and the way light is falling on this object and creating shadows, um, I find all quite interesting. So um, here's a second view. I want you to try three views. Um, hit F3 from the rendered image, and save it as project, like 2.2 in this case. Save as image, and try a third one. Okay, that's it for this video. Um, in the next one, we'll try a project uh, using an array modifier to create um, a radial symmetry. See you then.